Dominic, and I have been asked to uh, tell you uh, a little bit about the, uh, the UMA specification. Uh, and I've been given 10 minutes for that, uh, which is uh, quite a challenge. Uh, but I'm going to try, and I'm trying to uh, uh, to cover uh, some of the context of it, and I'm also trying to get into uh, into the actual flows about uh, about UMA. So first of all, I'd just like to uh, ask a question. How many of you are responsible for APIs that do uh, something with personal data? And uh, how many of you are, of how many of those are considering privacy with that? Okay. So, um, I'm gonna talk about what UMA is, where it's coming from, um, about how it's working, and um, this being uh, an API event, uh, UMA uh, has, uh, can have some consequences or shall have consequences for uh, the UMA role of the resource server, so I'm just going to reflect a little bit on that as well. So UMA, uh, it's, an, it's another acronym. It's an acronym three letters. That's pretty, uh, pretty good, actually. Uh, it stands for User Managed Access. Um, uh, uh, and the, uh, the user mesh access is, is actually uh, 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 quite elaborate in that sense because UMA is about the user, it's about managing, and it's about uh, managing its, its access. Uh, the reference is to a set of specifications that are uh, both uh, technical as well as uh, 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 covering uh, obligations that the different UMA roles uh, uh, engage with each other when they, uh, when they run the protocol. Uh, UMA is actually a working group uh, within a Cantera Initiative. Uh, Cantera Initiative is a standardization organization like IETF or uh, the, uh, OASIS or uh, uh, other organizations like that. The people working on UMA, they like to refer to themselves as humanitarians. Well, it's just a word, but it's funny. Um, UMA is not something that is just around the corner. Uh, it's been uh, it's been there since 2009. Um, in internet years, that's quite a long time actually. Uh, it's not ev not even up to a version 1.0 specification, but it has been given pretty much a chance to uh, to mature and to follow uh, uh, to follow what's actually going on, and uh, 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 every now and then adjust to that to make it. Uh, to make it applicable to real-life situations. So that's where it's coming from. Uh, UMA is about solving authorization. It's not doing anything else. Uh, it's not solving identity problems. It's not solving uh, authentication problems, provisioning, anything like that. It's not doing that. It's just doing authorization. Um, it is something, uh, it is a specification that does uh, conform to uh, legislation that is actually coming up. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, talking about the uh, EU Data Protection Directive. Uh, it's not going very quickly, but it is very inevitable that it will be showing up. And the legislation is about pretty much about respecting privacy. Um, we shouldn't be forced to uh, uh, oblige to the law uh, because we should already do that and the law should just confirm that but sometimes <coughs> that's just not happening uh, so the data protection directive states stuff about being transparent to the user giving the user uh, control over uh, over its data and see how it is used and by who it is used and tools to actually uh, work with that uh, these follow the privacy by design principles that's <coughs> Actually, pretty interesting read for everybody who wants to know a little bit about how to work with privacy. So I can re recommend going there and checking that as well. Uh, UMA is really all about putting the user in charge. Uh, UMA is following up on OAuth and uh, uh, taking the OAuth roles and extracting them and actually making the user in control of choosing uh, which authorization server to use, which resource server to use, or which clients to use for uh, working with data. So uh, the user is pretty much controlling everything. So apart from uh, following up on what I just providing some context, I'm going to uh, uh, step you through the, the, the protocol messages that are actually uh, 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 performing the, the UMA process 
of a case study for photo sharing. And uh, while doing that, I would like to describe a scenario <coughs> uh, where Bob is uh, a resource owner who is managing his photos, which I like to refer to as resources, using a resource server. And Alice is the one who, uh, who he wants to share photos with. Uh, she acts as the role of a requesting party. She's accessing a photo using a something like a photo frame viewer to uh, be able to show the photo that uh, Bob has actually taken and wants to share with her. The authorization server is the, the system that is actually controlling access uh, in, in, this, in this flow. So if you're going to look to UMA, <coughs> you will very often see, to, uh, 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 see this picture, which is uh, in UMA terms is uh, referred to as a magic spiral. It puts uh, a lot of the roles in perspective, which is the authorization server, which is managing the, uh, which uh, is a tool for the resource owner to manage uh, policies. Uh, the resource server is where the resource owner is actually uh, have, uh, managing his resources, like his photographs. Um, the requesting party is using a client to act uh, on behalf of the requesting party when trying to access the resources that the resource owner has as the resource server. So, <coughs> the UMA process can be divided in three steps. Uh, basically in three steps. First of which, a uh, user is uh, having a photograph, uh, Bob, and he, wants, he, has his, he has a photograph and he wants to uh, share that. Uh, first of all, he is going to upload the photo to the resource server and then he is going to register that photo as a resource with the authorization server. To do this, uh, pretty much a standard OAuth uh, uh, access token is required for the resource owner to let the resource server act on his behalf when uh, registering the resources with the authorization server. So, the power of repetition. This is what I actually just did. The photo is uploaded, it's selected as a resource that Bob wants to share and selects the UMA authorization that Bob wants to use to protect it. So, in the magic spiral, these, are the, the, these three parties are, actu uh, are acting uh, in this stage. So the second stage is about uh, authorizing access. This is where it gets a little bit more complex. So Alice receives a reference to the photo uh, that Bob has with the resource server. Uh, it tells her photo frame viewer, her client, to uh, get that resource. But as there, is no, uh, as there is no authorization for Alice set up yet, the resource server uh, will uh, register the, the required permissions to access this resource with, uh, uh, with the authorization server that is used to protect that particular photo. Um, it will uh, return the required permissions to, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to the client uh, and the client will uh, instruct Alice to, uh, uh, to set up the actual authorization that is required to uh, get access to that. Again, this is the overview of the parties that are involved here. The final stage here is uh, the actual access. Uh, with the uh, with the access with the authorization set up, the photo viewer, the client, has actually the authorization to use uh, at the resource server to get the photo. But when providing uh, the token that carries the, authentic, uh, the authorization data, the resource server actually needs to introspect the, uh, the, 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 uh, the permissions to, uh, with the authorization server to see whether the authorization is actually valid. So the authorization server is a point where the authorization is provided, but also where the authorization is being verified. And once that's okay, then the photo is retrieved and uh, the resource can be used. So. Just one final statement. Uh, the, the thing the, that makes uh, UMA stand out uh, with OAuth is the fact that uh, the roles of the authorization server and the resource server are separated by OAuth, uh, by, by UMA. So that makes it uh, possible for multiple parties to fulfill multiple roles and let the user actually choose the parties that it wants to use. So if you're going to look at the slides, I put in some links, some reference, and uh, that's what it is. Thank you very much, Mark. My apologies.
Buenas noches.